To select one of the onboard performances, we first need to move to the performance mode. Press the button marked performance just once, and the display confirms that we have indeed moved to performance in the top left hand corner. It also gives us the performance group, number, and name. Now, performance selection is carried out in exactly the same way as patch selection. All of those different methods can be employed in the performance mode, including the sound list down here. And once again, we see groups of performance names, and we can move up and down through the groups or in banks of 10. OK, well, let's uh, see what else the display shows us. Down here is a thing called key mode, layer. We have two different types of performance available. A layer performance allows us to stack patches together to create huge, lush sounds as played from the keyboard, like this one. Or user number three is a fantastic sound. OK, what else can we see? Well, down here is a display, a representation, if you like, of the available parts. Now, what is a part? There are 16 parts available for a performance, and a part is simply a patch that has been selected for use within the performance. 16 parts, 16 musicians, if you like. And this display shows that four of those parts are joined together. OK, so when I play the keyboard, I'm actually triggering four different patches at the same time. And I can see what those patches are using the cursor controls. The display shows part one is a sound called fifth sweep. Part two is a sound called vanishing. And so on. The dashes here show me that parts five through to 16 are not used. Let's try a different patch. There we see user zero two actually has six parts layered together. And once again, I can view the constituent patches within that performance. Now, you'll find that all of the user performances are of the layer type. But there is another type, a type called single performance. Let's move to the preset A bank. Here's a performance called pop set. Now, this is designed, rather than to be layered from the keyboard, to be used with the sequencer. And it gives me 16 instruments Part one is a piano sound. Part two is a bass sound. Part three, distortion guitar. Part 10 is pop drum set number one. Now, for historical reasons, part 10 is always reserved for drums. And immediately appears across the keyboard when I view the part. So in other words, what I'm doing here, by moving this cursor along, is selecting the current part. And once again, this is used when we're sequencing, so don't worry too much about using the preset performances in live performance. Simply use the user bank. 